Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. We're having technical difficulties. If you no! have to the show. <laughs> Not our show. Yes. And you know what? There's nobody on. If somebody come, if somebody's there, please let us know. Good morning. And how are you? Um, uh, ever since Mark got some kind of extender, we've been having issues, but he moved out and everything seemed to be working fine. And now we've just, uh, ever since last night, we just had this drag and delay last night on uh, classic television Smackdown. Uh, but um, it seems like, uh, you know, we're having problems again today. And today is Jerome's show of all things. It's, you know, it always happens for me somehow, you know. Uh, I, I think we've got Mr. Mark on the screen. Hello, Mark. Hello, How, are Mark. How are you today? I'm dragging ass. Can you hear me? <laughs> Better than yes, we can yes. hear you. I am going to probably hey Harry Carey, is that what it's called, Jerome? Harry Carey? Yeah, Harry Carey, yes. That well, no, that's the American. Yeah. I think it's called Sepaku or something like that. Oh, Sepaku, yes. You're right. And I will be performing that live. Uh here <laughs> at, at, no, no, at you can't. Point. You can't. You cannot. No, because you have to have somebody yeah. who can lop off your head because what you're supposed to do is cut ah. yourself and as you Damn show it all pain, to hell. then you have somebody lop your head off so you don't show pain. Yeah. I'm very familiar Obviously, with this you, whole thing. You see, Saturday morning cartoons, now, everyone. Now you understand. Uh, talk about our youth and other things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I watch Shogun, so, you know. Hey, uh, do me a favor, guys. Yes. I'm gonna log out in a happy um, computer, and um, you guys keep going on. Good morning, everybody that's watching. I'll be back hopefully. <laughs> Do not throw your computer out the window. So while Mark's logging off, let's talk. Let's talk, Jerome. Let's talk. How have you been? And tell us what you did last weekend. I went to a convention, the first one, a, a, a major one, not one of these small, you know, mom and pops, which I love, by the way. Yes, I recommend yes. people go to the small, or excuse me, to the small conventions more than the big ones because the smaller ones are so much more fun. But I went to one of the big conventions, the uh, Boston Fan Expo, got to see a ton of my friends who I hadn't seen in the last three years or so. Um Got to meet some some celebrities um, who we're going to try to get on this show. I don't know if we can, but we're going to try. Now, I'm not going to drop names so that you're not going to get your hopes up. But I did get some contact info, so we're going to see what we can do. Um, and basically had a grand old time, and I spent way too much money. Oh, you, you know? always do. I always <laughs> overspend like crazy. Piece of art I bought. That's very nice. I oh, like this, that. this is the small version. I wanted to get the big one, but I couldn't afford it. There was, a, I mean, just the level of artists. And I collect, um, I've been starting to collect art instead of, you know, some other things because I'm getting to the end of certain collections. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm heading that way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start selling more than buy, I think. I'm you and I will talk off air. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, why, why don't you tell everybody uh, what your daughter cosplayed as and, and who she got to meet? <laughs> So Gwendolyn is a big fan of all the girl heroes, especially redheaded heroes. Okay. So she loves Batgirl, but we didn't have a good Batgirl outfit. So Saturday she went as Black Widow. Black and she Widow, ran, that's cool. Yeah, she ran around, you know, shooting everybody uh, with the with this with the widow stingers. And then on Sunday, she dressed up as Kim Possible. That's awesome. And who did she get to meet? <laughs> Kim Possible. She got to meet uh, Christy, uh, I can't think, Carson, somebody or other. And we got to meet the uh, guy who played Ron Stoppable, who was on Boy Meets World. He was also. Oh, that's really cool. He's also. I the like voice, him. I like him a lot. Yeah. And he was also the voice on Batman Beyond. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Oh, yes. Yes. So he told me about. Um, he was. Um, I commented how much I like the work because you could really hear the changes in, in how he did the voices over the time. You could hear his, his abilities had gotten better. And I told him that I really loved the work that they did on Batman Beyond the Return of the Joker, which was the last thing they did in that series. And he said it was the most amazing experience he ever had because for 10 days on one side of him was Kevin Conroy, who played the voice of Bruce Wayne and Batman in the 
and was in Wings and everything else on um, in Batman the Animated Series. And he said on the other side of him was Mark Hamill. Oh, that's so cool. And he said it was the greatest 10 days of his life because – and he said his he learned so much from those two guys. They took him under his their wings and just aided him so much. He just said he couldn't, couldn't have had better teachers. So, oh, there we go. There you go. I was going to try to show that picture. Let me try to no, do No, no, that. that's the Frakes picture, Jonathan Frakes. But there's Gwen dressed up as Kim Possible, you know. Well, let's, you know, there, there we there go. You guys are at the, that's at the that's Saturday. Movie. That's the Saturday. Car and I both wore uh, Hawaiian shirts from Australia. And there's Kim uh, Gwenny dressed as, um, as Black Widow. That is really cool. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, she had a grand time. She loved it. She got herself this honking big tribble also. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I'll have to show you the next show. But anyway, looks like Mark is back and actually in, in, in moving. Decently. Yeah, you, you know, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. What what the way I was brought up is to take <laughs> to count to ten. Okay, basically, just count to ten. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm from a family of of high tempered uh, individuals, um, so we 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 had to train ourselves to count to ten. Uh, And and he's gone again. Gone, yep. I, I don't think he even realized it. He just popped off. Yep. So everybody, um, Mike, Mike is uh, Mike is watching us. So we do have somebody on on uh, watching on the chat here. Oh, that's on my very chat. cool. So what did you, you know? I know you're having some uh, minor issues at work. Oh yeah, well they're not minor; they're major. But yeah, we're not going <laughs> to talk about that. You know what? I will tell you though. Um, but what are you what doing I'm excited tomorrow? about is that um, my audiobook version of Warped Influences is now out on Audible, and Yay. I'm really excited about it. I've got a um, YouTube site if you want to see some trailers for the book and some uh, original music that I had composed. That's uh, over at Arthur, uh, Author R.M. Rose. Just and so you know, the commercial for it did air during uh, the Traveling TARDIS show on Tuesday. Did it really? Yes. That's yep. awesome. They showed did, it. Did they there. play the full one minute one? I don't remember which one, but I did know that it was That's your show. So cool. That yeah. is awesome. Um, I have a lot of plans for the channel, so stay tuned. And I know we'll be discussing it more, uh, you know, as we get go along. Yep. Oh, he's oh, well, he was back. But uh, yeah, um, next Friday night I'm doing an audio, a virtual audio book launch on Friday night at eight o'clock uh, on Streamyard. So. Um, yeah, I hope everybody can join us. I've got about six guests that I hope will be coming on to discuss the book. Hey, good morning. Morning, William. Morning. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Mark. Yeah. So, so right as, as 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 we have stated before, we're we're kind of back to our early days. You know, technical it's, difficulties. Yeah, it does seem that way. Except that <laughs> I'm not in my car, so that's a plus. <laughs> well, quick, grab your computer and run out to your car. Oh, I'll yeah, go. Yeah, our, you know, I, I had my cell phone, and it would always overheat, and I have to, and then I have to like get out of the show. It was, it was just a crazy. Yeah, or you time. held it up, or you held it up to the AC vent. I remember yes, I did that, that too. <laughs> and, but then, then you had you all, you all had the, the sound of the blowing. You know? Yeah, and, we were, and, and, and I'll I'll take my computer and run to the bedroom because I. I had mine in the master bedroom. So yeah, the early days. All right. So um Hello. Mark is having problems. There we go. We can hear you now. Hello. Yep, we uh, can hear you. Oh my oh. <laughs> Mark is gonna basically are, have a drink this morning. The gods are against me today. I am freaking <laughs> out. Uh but hi, I'm here somehow. Uh I was hearing you guys when I was actually off. Um, so if you said anything bad about me, I've already written it down. Um, <laughs> nah, nah, we were just talking what? about Jerome's great uh, con last weekend and my book being out on audio and yeah. And what I what I want to ask is why do we not have the trailer? Well, Ooh. I do have the trailer, but I just haven't put it on, and I really should. I'm kind of behind in all that. <sighs> it was on the Tardis show before ours. Rose? Yes. 
Well, hmm. I get, uh, well, G Garrett took my trailer and said that he was going to upload it to all the platforms, but. <laughs> well, I, I don't see it. So, okay. But it's not like we don't promote it heavily here anyway. We don't? We do. Yes, we do. We do. That is that is a true point. I agree. All right, guys. Um, Saturday morning cartoons. I'm sorry. I'm on the, 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 the one of my crippled computers, oh, laptop. I have three computers. Just bought one that arrived yesterday, and I'm still screwed. I, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> You know, and uh, but that's irrelevant. Today is Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, once again, we do this each and every week. Thank you guys for joining us for our past in terms of animation, in terms of cartoons. The next two weeks after this show, we will be on hiatus. Uh, so we will be back after uh, Labor Day. So that Saturday, is it that Friday we're doing classic guys as well? I think when we come back, we'll do classic. When we come yes, back, yes, we come back, okay. we do classic. Well, that, so that Friday and that Saturday, we're back doing uh, uh, first classic on Friday, and of course Saturday morning cartoons on Saturday, uh, and that is two weeks from to tomorrow. Uh, yesterday, I should say. Yesterday we did a show on uh, situation comedies on classic television SmackDown. It was wonderful. And, it was a good show, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I I'm still gobsmacked by how many guests there were on uh, the Love Boat. Uh, I don't think I, <laughs> that was a great that was like a great moment man <laughs> i don't think i even said a number but i think the number was actually 139 i think i don't know we'd have to find out but i tell you though that that geez we gotta have to do Jer jerome and i were driving every we're driving mark crazy because everybody somebody come on screen and we'd be like ah! <laughs> well here's here's the thing they started out in alphabetical order and we couldn't even get through all the A's without really slowing up the show but I did fast forward it and look like the number if you sat and watched the openings for all the guests on a love boat I think it took about 46 47 minutes for you to sit wow. and watch all the guests so like I said we could do a whole show just just based on that video I think yeah. yeah well I'm excited about Jerome's show today and the reason I'm excited about Jerome's show is because a lot of these cartoons that he's going to show uh, are my absolute. No, actually, part one, you showed, I think, a lot more of the cartoons that I enjoy yes. than in this one. But this yep. one has to be done. Otherwise, you wouldn't really cover the complete filmation. And we still have hours. more to go after this, too. Say again? And even after this, I could do a three and a four on filmation. I and didn't that's realize. Those, yes. That's one of those shows where you can do multiple parts. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get started and see if this thing will even work. <laughs> okay. So oh in, in, from, from the 1960s through the mid 80s, okay, uh, Filmation was the only real competition to Hanna-Barbera. At one point, Hanna-Barbera had 90% of all the cartoons on TV. And Filmation was the only one that came anywhere close to challenging them. Sadly, though, Filmation got bought out three or four times during its lifetime. The, the, the people um, running it stayed, but it was constantly run by different companies. And that affected uh, what they did, what they um, produced, and the quality. And you can see on some of them where you can see some of the, um, the, 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 the heavy hand of corporation came in. Now, Filmation mo loved to play heavily with CBS. They worked real heavy there. But um, they also were on other channels. Now, we're going to show some of these clips. Some of these, you may not even know that they were part of a Filmation. Some of them, you will have forgotten that they were Filmation. Some of these shows, I never even knew existed. Okay? So, uh, Mark, could you do me a favor and please run clip number one? This is one of my favorites. Can you do me a favor and cross your freaking fingers? Oh, I've got I've lit the I've lit the lit the incense and sacrificed a bucket of the colonel's chickens over. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, is that what that smell is? is yeah, extra, yeah. Ex, extra crispy, please. Can okay. You make it that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we don't do live chickens on the air. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're waiting. I know something's going to happen any second now. Do we have to have Rose load them up? I don't have them. Oh, you didn't load them on this. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Well. Woo! 
Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. So let's get ready, okay? Hey, hey, hey! I never knew this was filmation. Yeah. Okay. This was the last cartoon I would watch on Saturday morning before I went outside. <laughs> Mark, any thoughts on on? on I that agree. <laughs> this was um, okay. Hey guys, um, a, before, yeah. before I'm sorry, Jerome. Before we go forward, no, no. Uh, Rose, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I've uploaded all of his clips. So if I if you lose me, you can still continue. All right, I'll I'll go find them. Okay, so yeah. this is good. when I did the research on this. This is very funny. Did you know this show was first rejected by NBC? It, no. it, well, it was on CBS. Do you know why NBC rejected this show? I do. Why? Because they had a guy from the future come to the <laughs> 70s and say, you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe what's going to happen in the 2000s. So nope. we need to reject nope. this now. That's, isn't that nope. it? That's not it? No, that's not it. Now you're gonna love this one. They okay. rejected it because it was too educational. Mm. The dumbing of okay. America, the dumbing down yeah. of America. Why mm. not? Right. So, but the funny thing was, is this thing ran for eight seasons until, Ooh. um, yeah, until right up until the 1980s. Um, and they dealt with some really solid, hard issues and some of the light ones. Um, but they dealt with things like AIDS and stuff like that and death and, and, and robbery and vandalism, stuff like that. And every episode at the end, you know, they talk about what they learned and it was a very, um, solid episode. Critics loved it and educators praised it. This was one of those that it was a great show and it did what it was supposed to do. Um, now do you remember the, um, the, this was also based off of one of his comedy routines. Do you know which one it was? Uh, 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 the I brown, don't. the brown something. Nope. The brown. Hmm? It was called Buck Buck. Oh, real? Oh, did not know that. Did yeah, not know and they, that. And they actually did did this uh, that game in one of the episodes. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. it, we did. It. Well, oh no, you know what? When we were younger, we did duck duck goose, right? Yeah. No, buck so buck not, is basically is you grab like a pole and then everybody grab and then the guy grabs you around the waist and basically you form a thing and people jump on top of you and you try to see if the um pole I falls played over. That. Yeah, I played yeah. that game. Broke yeah. my back. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't we all? Yeah. But that was what the, the game was based off of. Now, if you run the second clip. This is uh, it'll show you a clip of how this um, this show uh, ran and how it um, how it showed, so people who aren't familiar with Fat, Fat Albert can see it. Okay, well, all of the files do not look. I see five through ten. Yeah, you know, I see this. Yes, I see. You see what I? Is it two through ten? I see eight at the bottom. You see that? I just I just moved eight up. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to the file. Let's try that. And uh, we'll, we'll start with two when we come back in terms mm -hmm. of, or rather three. So bear with me. So number two, here we go. It's going to take a few hours to load. Oh, I'm furious. You, you have no <laughs> idea what kind of volcano is happening in my brain right now. That's why we're in the boats getting away from, you know. Hey, Fat Albert, why don't you give it a test run? Don't you want to take the first ride, man? Nah, nah. I can ride it any time. Everybody gets a turn. 
Hey, Franny, you're cool. Yeah, you know man, right on, man. Wow, sure you're cool, cool man. Hey, 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 this will give me a good chance to test my compass. Why don't you get lost with that compass? You can't get lost with a compass. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm on my way. Before. That's rabbit. Of course he didn't. None of us rode one before. Uh-oh. There's no fuss when you got a compass. Okay, you can stop it at any point because it's it's all stopped in. So Fat Albert always had something going on in basically a junkyard of of South Philly. Um, they even had a junkyard band which they would do songs on. Uh, I don't know if you remember that seeing that. I do, I do. Yes, I do. I think okay. they had a wash one of those wash tub kind of things. Yep, wash tubs. My favorite was somebody got hold of a. Um, Look like a, a a radiator heater, and they just run their fingers across. They did the washboard thing. It was all it was great, and and especially the early stuff bent in the nineteen seventies. Um, this was one of those that defined the seventies in cartoons. Well, um, uh, not only that, I agree with you one hundred percent. But this is also one of the black uh, cartoons, actually mm -hmm. the first and only black cartoon that uh, you know my my race can relate to. Although I was born in basically middle class, uh, sorry about that. I was shut up. I was born in middle, in a pretty middle class uh, uh, neighborhood. Um, I still had friends that I visited, whatever, that were actually in a lower class than I was, and saw a lot of that uh, background, that 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 location. Uh, playing around or whatever when I was younger, so I can highly relate to everything that I see on this. Well, it was it was also a very urban versus you know suburbia or rural you know um, yeah. show. I thought and, I said that, but okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. But it, uh, um, you know, when I grew up on the military bases, it was also similar to like an urban environment. Yeah, and that that's is, why that's I know a lot of the kids that I grew up with could relate also. Do y'all yeah, remember yeah. the Fat Albert Halloween special? Uh, yeah. Not really? <laughs> I, I remember it. Um, I, I really uh, dug or dig this uh, this cartoon. And regardless of what has become of uh, Bill Cosby in the future, it doesn't turn me off um, from, from admiring this show. Oh. There are some people that want to do 100% you know, cancel culture on just about everything out there. And I don't roll that this show. Way. This I, show I, was this show. There were a lot of people behind it. If you read the credits, there was a lot of educators involved yeah. <clears throat> and they, um, they were really deeply involved in this and they really worked hard on this show. And, and it was more than just Cosby on this show. Yeah. yeah I mean, hey, it I'm was a well-written uh, series, you know, yeah, and, and it, it, it had was. some really good values for young people, I thought. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Jerome, this is directed to you, but uh, it's slow on my end, so I just pressed it. So hopefully you guys can see it and read it uh, yeah. before I actually see it pop up on my screen because I don't see it at all. Oh, there it is. See, it just popped up. Yeah, I saw, I saw uh, that yeah. with what William was talking about. Now I'm going to really? disappoint. I'm going to disappoint William on one thing. We did not do the Lone Ranger in this show. We did the yeah. Lone Ranger in the previous show. Well, I'm with William. I'm highly disappointed. And uh, <laughs> you know, if there's time left, we're going to dig something up, Dag Nabbit. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, buddy, go ahead. So last night, um, Mark showed one of his favorite shows. I'm surprised to see this. In fact, when yeah. I went through, you listen like, well, well, that's a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so roll clip number three if you can. Special power, and it makes them 
Okay, this was 1973 on CBS for one season of 16 episodes. Um, it was a spinoff of the show. None of the original actors were involved because at the time Bixby was doing The Magician and um, Walston, I think I can't, I was mangled his name, Ray. He he was walking so far away from Marsh, the My Favorite Martian thing, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So the guy who played Uncle Martin, ready for this? Jonathan Harris. Oh, yeah. you're kidding. No. Now, there Dr. was. Smith? Yeah, yeah. Now, there was original plans for the My Favorite Martian to have a fourth season before it got canceled. So they had written some scripts, including some of that. And they used a number of those scripts in this half hour show. Okay. Interesting. And, and the character of the nephew with the one antenna actually did appear in the original show once. Okay, so we've lost Mark. Um, but um, have you ever heard of this one? This this cartoon, Rose? Uh, for some reason, I vaguely do, and I don't know why. Really? I but but yeah. Okay. Um, I might have seen it as a kid because I mean I was actually two years old at the time, mm -hmm. so it might be like this vague thing in my memory. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, I understand. I never I had never seen it, and I can tell you exactly where I was in 1973. And I don't remember this show at all. Okay. Um, but there, it was also at the time the Super Friends were on too. So that may have been up against there. All right. Now, this one, next one is going to tie in with Roses and Reactions tonight. Oh, yes. Okay. So I don't know if Rose can do number four. Can yes, you, I can. I think. Would you please go? Let's Where darkness rules, fights the champion of light. Where hope seems lost, there rides the rebellion. Together they stand ready against the dark, evil warriors of the Horde and their leader, the terrible Hordak. Rebellion, armed with hope and ancient powers against the force of an intergalactic army. This is the story of one who will become leader of the Great Rebellion. Shira, Princess of Power, 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 Power. power. So. <clears throat> An obvious spinoff of He-Man, okay? Um, she is the twin sister of Prince Adam, um, which, you know, somehow ended up on another dimension. Um, now, some behind-the-scenes things. This was a joint production of Filmation and Mattel. Um, the initial characters and idea were created by Larry Ditello, I can't pronounce his name, and J. Michael Straczynski, of Babylon 5 fame. Oh, really? Yeah. Neither of them was given writer or creator credits. And because of that, they walked. Oh, my okay? goodness. Yeah, they went to another company. So the show was obviously aimed at young girls because it, the young boys were going crazy over He-Man. They figured we'll name some stuff at the girls and see what happens. And it was a moderate success. Uh, only ran for two seasons, but had 93 episodes. Okay. Um, now, um, here's the funny thing, and I'm going to give a little spoiler here, but it's right out of the first episode. She was a member of the Horde originally. Okay? Oh, really? Yes. yes. She was a captain of the Horde and basically had a, um, a come to Jesus moment and realized what was going on and became one of the leader. 
Now she took over for this other leader who basically, um, you know, was this young, naive kid and the witch you see in the background of all, all that people and her broom and her horse are the only ones who know that She-Ra and Princess um, Adora are one and the same, a la He-Man, okay? Um, there have been a couple of crossovers, uh, episodes of He-Man and, and She-Ra. They did a couple of movies together, I think, which was an origin one. And I, I never really watched it, I'll be honest. I didn't really watch She-Ra. I watched a couple of the remake, which I thought was really good, which you'll be talking about tonight. Yes. And... Um, but that's pretty much it on She-Ra. Any thoughts on it, Rose? You know, I never watched She-Ra when it was on originally. Okay. Uh, I was I was a big He-Man. Uh, you know, I, was, I I have I had this huge tomboy phase. Okay, yeah, okay. so it's like it's a girl. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, you know, I wanted I had all my little male friends at school, so I you know I'd watch stuff that they would you know, be interested in, so I could discuss it with them. You know? Yeah, they um they deliberately added um huge background to all the characters, even the minor ones. And one of the things that they said on this one was is they didn't want to do this as He Man with boobs. Right. You know, so they wanted real story to this one. And I don't know if that aided it or hurt it in the long run with kids, you know? Yeah, I don't think it ran as long as He-Man, right? Oh, no. He-Man ran for like six or seven seasons. This only ran for two seasons. He-Man was all over the place because of the sales of their, their toys. Yes, I had my 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 little guy friends would carry in the castle gray skull, and I'd just be like, <laughs> <"How> cool." <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, there was um there was some fights behind the scenes that make you know make the 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 soap opera far more interesting than than some of the shows. But um, yeah, uh, I never you know I mean I'm, I'm my understanding is is the toys sold somewhat well, not great, but um. You know, it, it, it basically faded away for a long time as it and also ran until the revival, which did really well from what I understand. But again, you're going to talk about that tonight. Yeah, tonight on Roses and Reactions at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Rachel and I are going to be discussing uh, Old School He-Man and the new She-Ra from uh, Netflix. So I hope everybody tunes in. It should be a lot of fun. What yep. you got next for us, Jerome? Well, next one is an interesting show. Um yeah, I'm just going to get right into it because of, of the clip and everything that's involved. This is the Archie show based off of Archie comics. Okay. Now, um, started this one started in 1968, ran for two one season from 68 to 69, 17 episodes, then was renamed um, in 69 the Archie Comedy Hour, where they made basically an hour-long show in, uh, instead of half an hour. Now, the thing about this show was um, – they had the first show, Archie show, half hour, sketch comedy, commentary about something, a song slash dance, and then another sketch comedy. Okay. And they were known for their songs. They were very popular. When they did the Archie comedy hour, they had another song come out and it was a huge, huge hit. It was the number one song of 1969. Okay, now I'll talk some more about it on the other side about spinoffs and stuff. So please run the next one. Um, we're not going to run the entire one because we don't want to get nailed for um, whatever. So you can start it somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter, Rose. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me let me see here. And now the Riverdale Carnival presents the Archies. Take care of the kissing booth while we're singing, Sabrina. Okay, everybody. Here we go with our new hit record. Sugar, sugar. Sugar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> we do not want to get nailed for <laughs> for anything on that. Okay. So, um, but this was the it was, it was a huge hit. At least four weeks that I can find number one in the United States. Um, considered the top selling now um song number one song of 1969. Um, now this show was was very popular. Um, it produced three sequel shows, which they also recycled some of the clips. And two spinoffs, okay? Um, we're going to talk about one of the spinoffs later in this show. 
And it was, um, you know, it was a staple from from 68 till about the mid 70s. Uh, you couldn't you couldn't miss um, the Archie stuff. That's uh, incredible. You know, yeah. you know what, uh, Jerome, just to let uh, you know and let the audience know. I think we did get knocked off of probably Facebook because we're down to like two people. And so you can catch us if you can, if we if you got booted off of Facebook, we are available on uh, YouTube and on Twitch. Um, and let me see if I can get the name of that up. Uh, yes, over on Twitch, we're at MBLSMC. Um, and we're also on Twitter at Florida Mark. And you can also find us on MBL Entertainment Group on uh, YouTube. So if you got knocked off and you want to go back on, because I, I can't see any, see any comments now or anything else. Oh, I've got somebody commenting. Let me take a look and see who this is. Yep. Uh, I, I oh, see a oh, comment. Also. Yeah, it, it's Mike over on Twitch, and he says hi. Hi, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for letting us know that we're still going. Okay. All right. So um, the Archie show was really one of the more popular shows. Um but in the modern era, people don't remember it because of um, a lot of aspects of, you know, the the wholesomeness of it and um, basically the safe, the safe comedy. You know, I absolutely loved this show when I was a kid. I never I missed, I never missed an episode. Uh, it was great. Oh, there's your cat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, so what have we got next? So the next one has an interesting story. Go ahead and run the clip number six. All right. Here we go. Greetings, Bat fans. This is Batman. And Robin, the boy wonder. And me too, Batmite. Welcoming you to the new adventures of Batman. Watch us wage our never-ending battle of good versus evil. Ride with us as we chase the greatest array of villains the world has ever seen. Proving that crime does not pay. Get set for thrills and action. Join me, Batman. And me, Robin the Boy Wonder. And that girl. And me too, Batmite. In the super new adventures of Batman. Okay, so as you can see, this was this was right out of 1966 Batman. Okay, they even got hold of Burt Ward and Adam West to do the voice work. Okay, um, what was interesting on this was um, at the same time that this was aired, the Super Friends was also being produced. Oh, so you really? had Batman on two separate stations. Yeah. Um, this was a CBS show. The uh, Super Friends, I think, was an ABC show. And you had Batman on, and they would run them against each other. Now, what was interesting was, um, let's see here. The Riddler and the Scarecrow had been licensed to Hanna-Barbera, and the Super, which is the Super Friends. So that's why you never saw the Joker on the Super Friends, because it was on this show. And the Joker was actually originally supposed to be slated to be in um the legion of doom but instead they had the joker and the scarecrow um a lot of behind the scenes stuff um this show was highly influential to a number of people especially those that created batman the animated series and it they paid homage to it in the episode called legends of the dark knight okay yeah, i think the this show is highly underrated yeah it was it was actually a really good show i went back and watched a couple of episodes while, while setting this one up um it was, like I said, it very much had the feel of the time. Um, you really had the 1960s feel to it. The only thing that's different, I mean, the Batmobile, the copter, the boat, all from the 1960s show. The only thing that was added new was the, um, from the gadget side, was the plane. It was a new new feature. Um, and Batmite is directly right out of uh, the comics. He's Batman's version of uh, Superman's Mr. Mixoplex. Huh. Okay. All right. So, um, did you, you saw the show? It sounded like. Yes, I did. I do remember the show. Um, cause I, I remember, um, Bat Mike and, uh, and you know, he's, they always have these little sidekicks, you know, it's just crazy. Ah, Bat, here's Mark. Here's Mark. 
Oh, you can see the steam coming out of his ears. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead with our, our next clip? Unless you had anything else about Batman here. Nope, I think I'm good there unless Mark wants to say something about Batman. Can't hear hey, you. Good morning, Terry from Ireland. Thanks good for morning, watching. Terry. Mm. All right. So Mark's having trouble with his microphone, so we're, we're going to move on. Um, this next one is a really weird one. I've never heard of this one. Neither either. I know Terry probably might have. So go ahead and run the clip. We'll, we'll talk about it on the other side. Sounds good. In from Earth on the far side of the sun is the planet Olympus. Olympus has special electronic devices that make it possible for Olympians to keep watch on Earth. President Sportacus of Olympus is devoted to the Olympian tradition of sportsmanship and fair play and wants to see that tradition carried on on Earth. Reference, origin of foul play, the twisted evil planet Vandalusia. Background, now ruled by evil witch Vanda. Planet destroyed in ancient times by Vandalusians in series of needless wars. Current situation, jealous of the Olympian tradition of sportsmanship that is enjoyed on Earth. Vanda has sent her agents to Earth to wipe out fair play. To counteract Vanda, a champion must be sent to Earth. Recommendation, sport Billy. Billy, we want you to be our champion. Report! All the tools you might need in miniature. Pull them out of the Omni sack and they become full size, ready for you to use in your struggle to protect decent sportsmanship on Earth from the obnoxious Vanda. The capacity of the Omni sack is infinite. I know you will use it with honor. based off of a European comic book and it was originally shown in Germany. Okay. Um, Filmation was trying to expand their market so they could keep uh, functioning. This was done in hey, 19- can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Thank God. Um, okay. Keep going. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. So, so this showed up in um, Germany in 1980 for one season, 26 episodes. And it showed up in 1982 in NBC as a summer replacement show. Okay, so it did show here in the States. All right. Um, so sportsmanship and fair play, I think they did it wrong um, at the wrong time to show that because in the 1980s was not exactly known. The size changing gym bag. Um, I'm sorry, Jen. I don't think it was a bowling bag. I like, think of it as a gym bag. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> here's the thing. Some interesting notes. The voice of King Sportacus, by the way, the Sportacus the 11th was done by Frank Welker and Paul Dini, later of Batman Beyond creator and um, creator of Superman, the animated series, was a writer on this show. Okay. Uh, I do not remember this in 1982 when it showed up in the summertime. I had never heard of it, never saw it. But when I saw the listing, I had to put it in there because it was one of those that none of us, I'm sure, had ever even heard of seen. Nope. Not me. Uh, and apparently neither Terry either. He's, yeah. He's over in Ireland, so. <laughs> yes, it's Felix the Cat's bag of tricks. Yeah, or a TARDIS. I'm not sure which. Um, <laughs> hey, let's take a commercial break. Uh, yep. We're not going anywhere, but I just need to say a few things. Uh, I'm getting uh, a lot of messages right now. I understand you guys got knocked off. We're going to have a better plan after hiatus, and that is hosting locations that you can run to after you're knocked off. I literally got messages from NBC Universal as Jerome was violating all kinds of rules and laws and criminal activity and things of that nature. And I knew for a moment when I got back, 
you know, we're, we're going to lose some numbers, which we. I don't even know what show that was, man. Yeah, because uh, all the ones know, that I'm looking at are all CBS based. Yes, and that I, well, that's interesting. It's got to be from Sugar Sugar. No, it was before that. We got kicked off before that. Okay. That's how the yeah. numbers drop before Sugar Sugar. And, and I got I got two flags all um, from NBC Universal, and of course, probably my favorite Martian. Maybe no, that was a CBS show, also. Very mm. interesting. Um, but either way, we're going to retool in the future so that people can move like Mike has. Yeah, you can't. You can't. If we get knocked off of YouTube or get knocked off, and luckily, well, not luckily. I, I'm sure it's coming. We didn't get a knock knocked off on YouTube, but I'm sure we probably will. But there is a way. It seems that uh, platforms such as Twitch and who owns TikTok? I don't TikTok know. TikTok is the Chinese government. We're, we're going to look into that, although I'm not very happy about going that way, because I think those are the guys that screwed up my broadcast, my, my computers in the first place. So <laughs> we're going to figure that out. So when we come back in two weeks, we're going to retool. We're going to have a whole new... Uh, platform a list of, of of where to go so we don't get interrupted like this again we yeah. may i prefer to stay to still broadcast from facebook and youtube um, because we get a, a wider audience there's more people that i think that are friends on facebook and youtube than there are on twitch but twitch is going to be a backup from this point on all okay. right that's the end of our commercial we return you to our regularly scheduled bro uh, uh, program already in progress <laughs> okay so uh, Sport Billy, um, you know, I never heard of it, but it was one of those that uh, I had to throw in here because we're talking about uh, stuff from Filmation that none of us had seen or talked about. Now, earlier we talked about the Archie show and the spinoffs that they did. This is one of the spinoffs. This is Sabrina and the Groovy Ghoulies. I, okay, now, hold not... on. Oh, 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 real, real quick, I'm sorry for interrupting again. I was such a huge fan of the Groovy Ghoulies, and mm -hmm. and they this was before they teamed up with Sabrina. Those no, no, teams. no. Sabrina and the Groovy Ghoulies was first, and then they spun off their own show. Ah, okay, I stand correct. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right, buddy. Go and ahead. that's and that's here. Here's the thing, though. When that show, and we're gonna run a clip of the show. We're not gonna run the uh, opening music or whatever. Yeah. Um, when the writers of Archie Comics were approached by Filmation. That they were gonna, you know, they were gonna do this Sabrina one. They were gobsmacked because Sabrina was a minor character at the time. She hadn't reached the popularity. She was starting to get popular in the comics, but she was basically had been only introduced a few years before this show came out. And this was an unknown character. They went and did it, did the show, and now suddenly Sabrina is actually more popular than Archie and the gang. Okay. Granted, the Netflix shows that didn't hurt, and neither did Sabrina the Teenage Witch with Melissa Joan Hart, and the animated show with her sister uh, didn't hurt either. But the Archies have faded. Sabrina has continued to grow. Um, now, one of the things you're going to see is that um, due to the limits of the animation of the time, when she does her spell, she's actually tugging on her ear. Mm, right. Okay. So go ahead and run clip number, what am I at? Number eight, please. You got it, Rose. You've been doing wonderful so far. All right, here we go. It's Sabrina, what brings you to Horrible Hall? Aunt Hilda baked a dozen cookies for you and the other ghoulies. Cookies? <laughs> Man, like I'll take five. Give me ten. I'll have six to go, you know. Wait just a mummified minute. There's only a dozen cookies, so we'll have to divide them evenly. What does divide mean? Boy, are you silly. That means arithmetic, you know. Yeah, like three and five is 35. Your ignorance amazes me. Any child could figure this out. Uh, let's see. One dozen equals... Uh, uh, there are 12 cookies in a dozen, Cousin Drac, and there are one, two, three, four of you. So, we divide four into twelve for our answer, and find out that you get three cookies apiece. Golly, Sabrina, you sure are smart. Oh, I knew the answer all along. I was just testing you. Well, it sure wouldn't hurt you fellas to brush up on your math. An excellent idea, Sabrina. These dum-dums can go to school with you tomorrow morning. Okay. 
So basically you, you get them going to school and, and all sorts of silliness involved. Um, the, the, the whole aspect of this was um, Sabrina wasn't supposed to be this cute, cuddly teenage, which she was supposed to be this horrible monster, but Aunt Zelda bumped the table and spilled sugar and spice um, <laughs> into the brew. She, she, I'm sorry. I know it's, they're just drawn that way, but she was gorgeous. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I love Sabrina's look. I, I love her hair, you know, yeah, and, and, I and agree. it's so cute, you know, and the face. Yeah. And she has freckles. She's got yeah, freckles. Yeah, freck I, I love them. For, for a girl she with white so hair, she's got freckles. I found that funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. She should be red, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. like when. But uh, she, she was absolutely gorgeous. But I was such a fan of the Groovy Ghoulies, man. And I know the music by heart, beginning to end of the Groovy yeah. Ghoulies. I just and, love that show. And the Groovy Ghoulies got real popular with this. Um, what's she saying here? Uh, no, actually, uh, um, I think the ear tug was more an homage to Carol Burnett. Uh, yeah. Because... Um, bewitched, she wiggled her nose. Okay. Yeah. Hey, okay. Wh who? What was uh, Jen talking about here, Jennifer? Uh, what was she talking oh, about? Oh, with the TV show, the the, the TV show, the the the, 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 continue, the adventures of uh, Sabrina, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the chilling adventures of Sabrina the Teenage yes. Witch. And we're but there was also seasons. the Joan Van, not Joan Van Ark, Joan Melissa, Hart, Melissa Joan Hart. Yeah. Melissa Joan Hart uh, live which action, which was in the '90s, which had a spinoff of an animated show of Sabrina the Teenage, which which starred her younger sister, by the way. Ah, gotcha. okay. oh, wow. and, and here, here's a fun fact: the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. When it ended, they brought Sabrina onto Riverdale. I have not watched. That's this season. I have not watched this. Season. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they Too did. Much. Too much. I can't oh, keep yeah. up. Too much. Oh yeah, I can't keep up on everything either. But the, the but back to the '60s and the '70s. So Sabrina, the Groovy Ghoulies spun off of this show, okay? Sabrina, then they did the Sabrina Archie Comedy Hour, okay? And yeah. basically you did not see anything Archie or Sabrina in t um, from the um, – when was this here? Hang on a second here. I'm just checking my notes. Oh, I didn't get this one on the Sabrina one. Um, it, in the mid-'80s was the last of the Archie shows and you didn't see anything until the Melissa Joan Hart show showed up, started off as a, a TV movie for the pilot. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. agree. You know, I worked with, well, I didn't work with her. My <laughs> girlfriend, I was dating. The reason I moved down here to Florida in the first place, uh, cause I was dating, uh, for a long time, long distance, the wardrobe is for, um, Clarissa explains it all. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, and she was a wardrobe, so I was on that set a lot. So I knew Melissa when she was probably, what, 13? Yeah, 14, she was whatever. in Clar Clarissa. Yeah, she was the star yeah, of that one. Yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time at the uh, the food table. <laughs> I did, man. They fed you so, so – I was either in the wardrobe department, makeup department, or out in the studio just eating off the table while I'm listening to them film. It, it was fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. Um, so like I said, this was, a, a um, Sabrina just, you know, took off. All right. Um, yeah, they tried doing that. It kind of didn't work out well on that, Terry. I saw that and, um, I did not know that Terry. Yeah. They <laughs> did an episode to promote the movie. It kind of flopped. Um, really? people pretty much forgot about it real fast. You know, Man, you guys will watch anything. <laughs> no, actually I did a lot of research. Yeah, it wasn't I watched good. everything, but you know, there, there's. I mean, if we ever do the uh, the the Sabrina one on the um, classic television, where there's a lot of stuff on that one too. All right, so clip number nine started about forty seconds, and then stop after about two minutes and thirty seconds, or anywhere where you basically are pulling your hair out. Okay, I'll I will give it a shot. Okay. Can you do that, Rose? With because we uploaded these, I can do. Help of 
my latest invention, the copycatter duplicator Rooney. Copycatter? That's right. It makes a perfect replica of any object. Watch. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the yeah, episode... I can't, when they're uploaded, I can't fast forward them. That's fine. right. It, this right. is called "Will the Real Jerry Lewis Please Sit Down?" Okay, <laughs> one season, eighteen episodes. It's, it's a show that's based off of the 1965 film "The Family Jewels," which Lewis played multiple characters. Okay, the uh, show is similar in style to the Archie Show, basically sketch comedy. Yes, Jerry Lewis. Okay. Um, Lewis, Whoops. though, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I don't know go why ahead. this is on there. I don't know why that. Lewis, no, I did that. I did that. Lewis wrote a few of the scripts, but did not provide any of the voice whatsoever. Okay, now you're gonna love this. The voice of Jerry Lewis was done by David Lander. You might have known him as the as who later became famous as Squiggy. Oh, oh very good. Yeah. And Squiggy, Squiggy, unfortunately, the character David Lander passed in 2017 from um, complications of multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, well, you know the voice of the professor, right? In that, no, it was Howard Morris again. Okay, um, Ernest T. Ernest T. Okay, from Andy Griffin. Okay, I'll take yeah. your word for it. Um, yeah. Kind of a forgotten show. Most people, um, I you know, I did a kind of a, a, um, um, a poll of some people I know, and nobody even knew that their show existed. I did. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. I you actually did. did too. I knew. I knew it existed. I would not want to watch it. Jerry Lewis drove me nuts. I'm sorry. I, I used to watch. I still we watch some of the Jerry Lewis movies. Depends upon well, which yeah, ones I'm there, watching. There are some good Jerry Lewis movies. I wasn't a fan of the Telethon. Uh, I, I watch the telethon every year when I, I watch the telethon. I was a telethon guy. <laughs> the only man. thing was, on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, that's true. Labor Day weekend, right? Is yeah, that when yeah. it was happening? Yeah. Started yeah. at Friday about six o'clock at, at night and went till noon the next day. Okay, now you know too much. Okay? <laughs> no, that's just memory. That's just yeah, memory. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little scary. All right. So we have come to the last of the sh uh the clips that I have for this. So go ahead and run clip number 10. Alrighty. In a distant time and far away place, the planet of New Texas floats deep in space. Sky of three suns. Land the precious four. The carrier rush brought out by the score. Star, star, star. And one day a lawman appeared with powers of pop, wolf, puma, and bear. Protector of peace, mystic man from afar. Champion of justice, Marshal Gray Star. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this was um, a sci-fi Western, as it's obviously a choice. Um, huge criticism because of a lot of the, the problems that, of what they drew into it. Um, science fiction fans hated this show. Okay. Well, not um, all of them. <laughs> all right. Let me put it this way. A lot of science fiction fans hated it. How about okay. that? <laughs> okay. Um, this was aired a year after Mattel had released a line of toys. There were over 50 licensed items from sheets to action figures and so on. But unlike He-Man, this show disappeared after one season in syndication. And the toys also disappeared off the shelves almost immediately. Okay, um, I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't know why somebody's gonna help me, but that freaking horse freaked me out. Thirty thirty, <laughs> as he's known. Who? Thirty thirty. Thirty thirty you know, is something like that. Uh, named basically for the the caliber of a gun or something. And he, he was a horse, and then after a certain point, he would stand up on his rear hand, rear hind, yeah, and, on his rear legs, yeah. And he That's would, um, out. and he would talk and everything else, and horrible. Um, yeah. 
this was the show that basically killed the studio. Okay. This show and the um toys cost $20 million to produce in 1987. Woo! The show itself cost $5 million, but with the uh, the cost of the additional $15 million to create, promote, and whatever, the action figures and all the other lines of toys, it's listed as $20 million. And this is the show that killed it, killed the wow. studio. Um, after the show aired, they shut down the studio, and that was the end of that. The, That's it, a shame. Yeah. yeah because I it think is. they're going to have some quality and different stuff from other, you know, now, unfortunately, Theory. what happened with Filmation's library, it got bought and cut up and everything else. And some of the shows have either disappeared altogether due to um, damage of the um, prints or they've re, um, re-recorded them at the wrong speeds. So the voice work is not proper. It, it's just been a sad case about Filmation and its library. Um, yeah. It really is. Now, there's more to talk about with Filmation, which we will do on another show. But Wait, there you go. We're not done. Uh oh. We're not done. Uh, I just texted William because I knew he got knocked off. I hope he's still watching. Um, but I, I like to grant his request because this is what I like to do here on, on Saturday morning cartoons when we can. Uh, like Joe, uh, uh, Jerome has said, we can't cover everything. Okay, yeah. we try. We, we only do 10 clips per, per show. We try to, but there were more than 10 clips of stuff. Oh, yeah. So I could have spent a couple of hours on this show. You, you sure could have. Uh, but because he asked, and while I'm talking, I'm fiddling, 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 fiddling around with, uh, oh, don't mess with me today. I'm not in the mood. Um, let's see. A tab. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it, guys. But he had specifically asked to see something. Uh, I swear to you guys. Well, do me a favor, Jerome, while I'm filling around yeah. with this. Can you talk a little bit about the Lone Ranger? Okay, so the Lone Ranger um, show was um, basically an attempt to bring bring the Ranger back. This was before the film, that, that horrible film that they did in, in the um, 1980s. Um, this was done kind of in the okay. same style as Tarzan was done, uh, animation-wise. Yeah, okay. that rotoscoping. Yeah, a lot of rotoscoping. Um, yeah, can you see it? it? Uh, yeah. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> can you, you can see my screen, right? Yes, yes. If I lose you guys when I share a screen, I don't see you guys. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I can see you. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and play this so I can at least get back. Yep. You can. Uh, yeah, we can see it. And uh, now we may get hit. You may get a strike for this, but uh, yeah. it's worth it for the last clip. Okay. Yep. Sound. Oops. Hello, there you go. Ranger. <laughs> I O Silver. Away. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high or silver, the Lone Ranger. And his fearless Indian friend, Santo, the daring and resourceful mass rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Fire Silver! Away! I'm pretty sure that's Robert Conrad. All right, for you, William. Yeah, uh, not William. Robert Conrad. Uh, that, um, William Conrad. Um, William Conrad. Right, I'm pretty sure Ooh, that's Robert Conrad. William Conrad was canon. Yeah. William and, Conrad was canon and was the original voice of the uh, Lone Ranger on the radio. He was also the narrator on uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. As I try to drop screens here, guys, I'm kind of, he was. Yes, he was. He uh, did a lot of voiceover uh, work. It's so surprising. I think William is Governor Murlock right now, and I think he popped on and changed his name on, on another okay. uh, format. So anyway, he, he got so, to see yeah. that. 
Yeah, he, yeah. you know what? He, he posted much love to us. I, you can't see it, but, but I think he's grateful that we played the clip. But yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> he's right, though, that they did combine the Ranger, Tarzan, Zorro. You know, basically, they tried to bring you like all these. Why? Because all these shows, it was easy to get the rights to them. Okay. Nobody was right. doing Tarzan, Lone Ranger, or Zorro back in those times. Um, right. So they hey, were. What was that? What was that? Was that Zorro that they did? That was Filmation Zorro, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, I hate to see it. Was not successful. Okay. Yeah. Um, they 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 didn't last very long. Um, Filmation was struggling at the time because they had financial problems. They were getting bought and sold by different companies. There was a lot of drama behind the scenes going on. You yeah. Know? Yeah, um, that, which is a shame because they had some really good styles and some really good shows. Yeah. So uh, technically, and I, I want to stay on track here, um, but, you know, just to segue actually uh, a bit. Uh, this is the disgusting part of losing Saturday morning cartoons around 2014, I think, is when we really saw the, the end of network. Yeah. And then they put on these E slash I, which was uh, educational, informational uh, shows on Saturday morning. And it, it's really interesting. And then they got rid of them. How, what, it's really interesting how we, we always have to maintain our education, which we do, in my opinion, even with Saturday morning cartoons. But you, you literally excise that portion of our education by no longer showing us uh, a time to laugh and a time yeah. to use our imaginations and a time to, 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 to be thrilled by things uh, through the art of animation. And uh, it, it really infuriates me. And this is why, you know, I decided to do this show in the beginning, because I know that I don't want people to forget, you know, even if you have young kids or whoever who are looking at this, these shows for the first time, this is what we grew up with. This is what we enjoyed. And it's fun. Well, also, the, the strength of this is that on Monday morning, you would you would go talk to your friends at school. Absolutely. About yeah. what you yep. watched on Saturday or you would play with the other kids in the, uh, in, you know, in the playground or whatever. And you'd say, "Hey, did you see this one this morning? Whatever." You know, yeah, um, yeah. I'm and, not. I don't know. And 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 maybe you can help with this, Rose. If uh, let's go to classic television. Sure. If uh, if currently during our this era now, as we speak, if the kids were literally talking about what happened the previous night on, let's say, Krypton or 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 uh, well, definitely Supernatural. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You people. know what? I think, I think they don't even talk. I think it's just everything is a chat room now and everybody wants to be in the chat room, you know? Yeah. 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 Good point. Good point. Cause we didn't have that access. Uh, I'm we kind were. of glad we didn't because it was fun to get, you know, the firsthand, you know, ex yeah. there was, there was a lot of excitement and I don't think that, I think that well, excitement is lost. It was a shared as it is today be, because we only had three networks for, if you yeah. know, PBS or whatever, right. it was a shared experience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was real life spoilers. I mean, yeah. we could literally reach out and put our, our hands around somebody's throat because <laughs> walking down the hallway and two people were talking about what just happened last night on Dynasty. I mean, that was yeah. But see, the right. difference was the difference. So when back in the seventies, when you and I were up, wired there, if you missed an episode, you had to wait till the summertime. Yeah, so catch that episode. episode again. <laughs> yeah. So cool, and this is why for Saturday morning cartoons on Friday night before Saturday morning they had these literally heavy produced shows. Production values on it was was increased, where yeah. they're showing all the things you're about to see on Saturday morning. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. my brother and I sat in it front of it was a preview TV. shows. Oh my god! The and the problem, the problem was. Is in the last couple of years that they did it, which was in the late seventies. Yeah, they aired them at the same time. Yes, All I didn't yes. air at the same time. Yes. Yes. Dude, yes. dude, this is why my eyes are so bad because I was <laughs> sitting on my ass on the floor with my hand on the dial because we didn't have remote controls, yeah. and I was switching back into there's <laughs> NBC, there's CBS. Oh, Jackson Five are coming on ABC. Oh yeah, I want to see that too. You know. Yeah, and they, I mean, they were, they were, I mean, if you look back now, there's a couple of them you can find online. Oh my God, they're cheesy as hell. But yeah. for us, and I did show age, them. I think when I did my cartoon grid uh, on yeah. Saturday, morning, I did show uh, preview shows uh, doing that as well. So, uh, and we'll get back to that because I, I, I want to do another cartoon grid show where we literally saw what the competing cartoons were 
uh, on all of the three yeah, networks, you know, at the same fun. time. Yes. Yeah. 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 What, what is, uh, what is, what he was William saying here about? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Batman? Batman was shown on Saturday mornings uh, a couple of times, depending oh, on your awesome. market. Yeah. Um, Come on. I mean, I almost broke my neck trying to climb the, the wall like that. Well, look, when you saw Catwoman, and nowadays I would wake up early every morning, not on purpose. I just, I'm just i just old. And we do that. That's when I was watching Canon. And then, of course, Barnaby Jones, which had, uh, uh, what's her name on it? Cat Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather. Yeah, Lee Merriweather on it. I'm sitting there going, that's Catwoman? My gosh. She's yeah, cool. but let's be honest. Okay, look, let's be honest here. Julie Newmar had the best body. Yeah. But well, Eartha, but 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 wait, but Eartha Kitt had the best voice. I think she, Eartha Kitt was the sexiest to me. Oh no! Well, Eartha Kitt had that 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 way she rolled her. Yes, you know, which I, I cannot mean, that, do. That she purred. Okay, but Julie Newmar was all leg. Uh, Julie was. Oh my God! The woman's over six feet. I mean, yeah, yes, but she was it, absolutely and, stunning. But Eartha Kit, I didn't even bother looking. I just listened to her voice. Yeah. You know? yeah. I wanted to say something before I had all these computer problems because you you had showed something, and I can't remember, but I wanted to comment. We did talk about Batman, right? Uh, did yes. you mention uh, Batgirl on that filmation series? Yeah, there, she, she was shown, but, uh, you know. Okay. Um, by the way, Catwoman in that episode. What, still talking in that about show, Catwoman. Yeah. You're still talking about Catwoman. I know. Okay. Let me finish. Yeah. Catwoman in that show was not wearing a dark clothes. She would wear like the tiger print um, purple tiger purple. outfit. Yeah. 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 It was purple. And you think her headgear had felt or uh, yeah. velvet. Uh, it looked like something from Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, it sure did. It sure did. You know, and, and did she have a tail in that? I, I don't remember. remember. I don't remember. I don't remember Probably either. did. Yeah. 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 But uh, that, you know, the, I'd still pay homage to Filmation for producing us uh, cartoons that, in its own respect, because they did repeat a lot of body motions. You know, when they run, uh, you always see when when Batman and Robin were on the screen at the same time. One was in the foreground, the other was in the background, or yeah. they were literally facing each other, like inches away from their face. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and you especially saw that like on Star Trek when they would have um, Ahura, the Shell Nichols character, That's run. Correct. It was a That's horrible correct. run. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really. Uh, Mike had mentioned something about uh, what is I it? I don't remember the Catmobile with Eartha Kid. She had. She may no. have. Oh, yes, I do. Live action Batman. Yeah. She had because Joker rode with her in a scene in a in a scene. In episode. Okay. I did remember that. Okay. Yeah, and it literally had a curved ta a tail in the back. You know, and it curved up, which was ridiculous. But you know, <laughs> come on now, they're villains, okay? They 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 gotta have their panache. They can't okay. let Batman just roll around in this freaking nice looking. Uh, what was that a Ventura? Oh, I don't, I know, don't what... know. I'd have to look it up. Yep, yep, I got gotcha. you. But anyway, there you go. Filmation. Right. We will definitely be doing more on Filmation, uh, simply because of how good their stuff was. All right. Once again, guys, uh, we are off for the next two weeks. We're going to retool. I'm so frustrated with this computer that the the more, the faster, the more expensive computer, the one that actually worked well when I was doing shows is in the shop because this idiot, idiot spilled water on the keyboard and they are now putting a new motherboard in it. Of course, they had to order it for parts. Uh, I went on and bought a computer I thought that would help me out. It was 200 bucks. Well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> no, that's not good. Not good. Without a doubt, you get. And I'm literally going to rebox this today and send it back to Amazon and and get my money back. I'd rather invest that 200 in another thousand dollar computer, you know, uh, yep. and do that. Um, uh, guys, uh, one of our guest hosts here, if you did not guest host, one of our co-hosts here, if you guys did not know, is an author, an accomplished author. She knows this dude right here does not read. Okay, so <laughs> there's the audio book right. now, so you no excuse. The audio book is out. Yeah, she's got, she's got you on that one. Absolutely, you have an absolutely brilliant point there. Um, that get, how long is that audio book? It's 19 hours and 30 minutes long. It's what? 19 <laughs> hours and 30 minutes long. It's what? <laughs> 19 hours and 30 minutes long. <laughs> I don't feel bad about not reading because now I'm <laughs> not going to listen anymore. I, I'm not going to listen. What? Are, I, 
I never heard of an audio book that long before. Are you oh, serious? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it, the book is over 500 pages, so it's 19 hours and 30 minutes long. Listen, think- listen, Mark. All the all the the audio books that you've heard that are short are edited, annotated. These are the unedited pages. She's it's read the whole thing. So you, you know you can, when you're when you're when you're flying to Arizona or Texas, you can just pop in the earbuds and listen. Yeah. I've never been on a 19 hour flight before. Okay. <laughs> you, you do it, you do it in bites, man. I I, yeah. I, I listen to my audiobooks on commute. So I'm like, you know, it, I get like two hours a day driving. Yeah, can I, I, can I, I do com- that can same I, way? Can I fast forward to the end? Can no. I do that? No, no, you miss all the good stuff in the middle, man. It's right. it's a mystery. It's a it's a you know, it's a sci-fi psychological thriller. You know, you, you miss something if you skip it. To I, the I don't. End. I don't really uh, want to scare you guys off on on the ridiculous length of time that this audiobook runs. You really need to. Uh, it, in fact, you, you, you know what? It's good. It runs. It, it goes so fast because like every chapter is a nail biter. So yeah, you know what? The dentist told me that once. Okay, <laughs> this is going really be fast. It's really good. It's really you're not gonna you're not gonna feel a thing. Trust me. Okay, so I want you guys to watch. Rosemary Rose's trailer for this audiobook, and then you will go on Amazon and you will buy this today, or I will block every single <laughs> one of you guys from our chat I room. Two copies. And, and, Did you? And really? when you're halfway through, let me know. Let Listen, me know where we, I can start it. Okay. We gave we gave yeah. one to Chris Golden. Okay, and then I Ooh. bought another one back to him. He's a known sci- uh, horror writer. Got it. He's a friend of oh. mine. Oh, cool. You you gave him. I bet you he ain't done yet. So watch this Probably trailer, not, guys. Because he's a writer himself. You know, he's got a million well, things well, to read well, and write. Watch this. Our incredible author here online uh, has uh, written and some knucklehead recorded a book. So listen, watch this trailer. <laughs> I dream about a man. At least I think they're dreams. I can never remember his face, but he has bushy hair. You think he has something to do with your alien abduction theory? I understand there are no such things as aliens. You understand nothing. Stop this! Damn it! Wake up, Mitchie! I'm not me anymore. Fight it! Fight it! Are you Are you playing at Wimbledon this year? Warped influences, written by R. M. Rose, narrated by Sky Alley. I'm going to be so drunk when I listen to this. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be so intoxicated. I used to do that with Led Zeppelin and uh, Pink Floyd. So there's no reason why I shouldn't do it for this one. Uh, yeah, but I those am, you had to have special sorts of chemical influences. Well, that too. But I am so proud of you, Rose. Uh, guys, we, we, we have a celebrity in our midst. And uh, you need to go out and buy it. Um, give us your... your, your um, unadulterated uh, opinion on it, and uh, we're, we're going to love it. So, did, 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 Rose, did you Rose. look at the numbers? Did you look at the numbers after last night's discussion? Uh, no. Okay, you were up to like number fifty thousand, which is a really good number to be at on Amazon. Yeah. Out of out of like two million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William says they'll cover my drive from no. <laughs> he's going to fly no. up and he's going to be in there 45 minutes. Yeah. I don't drive anywhere. Okay, so chapter one. <laughs> I don't drive. <laughs> I got to plan a lot of trips then. Um, I don't drive anywhere over four hours. So, you know, I, I would definitely, uh, without a doubt, give this a chance because I know it's fantastic based on what people are already saying right now. And, of course, what the numbers are saying uh, on, on the book sales. So. Next, next Friday night. 
We're doing, I'm going to yeah. do my audio book, virtual audio book party. Okay. Launch party. So I'm going to have some videos and some talking about the book and people who've actually read the book are going to come on and say what they liked about it. Uh, Sky Alley, who's the narrator. I'm hoping she's going to come on and talk about it because I adore her. You know, I hired her and now we're friends. I, I'd like to think, and uh, you know, she's pretty cool. And uh, she actually uh, is starting to go full time on her voice uh, acting. She's done over a hundred, like probably two hundred books. She's got over one hundred and sixty five star reviews on Fiverr for her narrating. So um, you know, that she's, is amazing. She's, she's, the real, she's the real deal. So uh, I hope you all join us on Friday night at eight o'clock. And uh, and but tonight, I want to talk about something else real quick. I'm going to do a share screen here. If I can, let me see. Share screen. Hey, you've gone up. Oh, you're watching our numbers. Well, you know the 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 way they have the numbers ranking is is interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't do it. She has. Oh, I, I, I I I can't take her around with this. Anyway, um, t tonight, guys, uh, please, uh, roses and reactions at seven o'clock. We're doing uh sh the new Shira. An old school He-Man, six episodes. Uh, we're going to discuss six episodes of each, and uh, it should be a really awesome show. So please join us uh, tonight at seven, and then join me next week um, uh, for for my virtual audiobook launch at eight o'clock. And then, but our shows are going to be off the air for the next two weeks. So where are all of us? Here we yeah. go. There we are. <laughs> I don't know why we're that way, but okay, maybe this way. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Well, what were you looking for? I had popped up. Uh, I have um, the MBL Roses and Reactions page with our with our uh, banner for tonight. But I I don't. Yeah. When I hit share screen, what what do I do to get to, uh, to change tabs? How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. I did it earlier, but I know I don't remember. <laughs> Just trial and error, I guess. Oh, Rose. oh, you know what? Here, look at what Terry has to say. Rosemary Rose has written a song also, I did. And you can find that on HWWS Indie Music Radio. And it's yeah, it's for the book. And I was so excited the other day when I actually heard it on the HWWS Indie uh, Music Radio. I did not sing the song. I wrote the song. Thank God. And, uh, but it, it's it's a beautiful song, and uh, you all should uh, if you go over there and request it. If you request, um, oh my gosh, uh, before I go, if you go to HWWS and request before I go on Indie Music Radio, they'll play it like within the next uh, like thirty minutes usually. Excellent. So you can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so soon you're going to be getting one of those gold albums, you know? No, I don't think so. But, you know, I, I, here's, here's how this all came about. We're always getting hit for commercial rights. Okay. So I wanted my, so I'm like, yep. I wanted my, I decided to buy and start, I started hiring people and having all this music composed for my book. So I could use it for my book trailer. So I could put it on my YouTube page and, and I have the commercial rights. So no NBC universal, Nobody can come in and say, hey, that's mine. Because I'm like, no, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. That's exactly right. Um, go ahead, Jerome. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm excited. Oh. I, thought, I thought I lost you guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks, um, Terry, for putting this up. We're trying to uh, – I oh, my God, man, I'm, I'm so – frazzled today with this you know what mark issue. all i can say um, is worry about this later go watch some football you know what that'll make you happy yeah if it was it's football season yeah it would it's preseason time <laughs> yes it is it is it is preseason yeah um you know? what terry is saying here tonight yes definitely come out and see this hey man i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna sit and round and, and and watch that and throw popcorn at the screen and and, uh, yeah, we, we should we should have you know we, we actually I don't think we're going to be a lot of fighting tonight, but just a lot of fun because we like both shows. So it, you know, we're just well, gonna, I'm more excited you know, about the He Man thing. I, I don't know how I feel about <laughs> although I heard good things about Shira. You know, um, I didn't think I was going to like it. I absolutely adore that show. It's really good. It's interesting. Very interesting. I may have to uh, pick that up. All right, guys. So two week hiatus. You'll see us uh, in two weeks or so. 
we have some special guests going on. And in fact, uh, some of our co-hosts who we have mentioned early on in the week has contacted me. Uh, some of our upcoming co-hosts has contacted me. And our next co-host show will actually, we'll have a full screen here. There'll be six of us on, um, you know, talking about uh, cartoons and, and things of that nature. So I'm really, really excited about that show. We'll give you a date. Uh, I gave them three options, uh, but we'll give you a date as soon as I know. You'll know, um, but that's going to be fun. Uh, and um, um, follow us, of course, on Classic Television SmackDown. Follow us in, in uh, Saturday Morning Cartoons. Follow us in Roses and Reactions. Um, it, it's going to be uh, a fun uh, mid to end of September, I, I do believe. It's going to really be hot and heavy, mm -hmm. but right now, we need a break, man. Uh, we need yet another break. Let's say that. It hasn't been too long since we came off. So this was Saturday Morning Cartoons. Uh, hopefully you guys will have a fantastic weekend. I got conventions coming up soon, and um, I'm going to try and, and get this uh, situation uh, settled with my laptop. Rose and Jerome, thank you guys job, so Jerome. much. You guys thank are you. fantastic. Talk to you in a bit anyway. See you guys. We will head on out. We're still live. I'm hitting in broadcast here. See you all later. Bye, Bye. guys.